Welcome back to my shop. My name's Guy and today I'm going to start working on this, which is a buffet. It's a very large piece and I'm going to put together the frames. So there's a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. So like any project, I'm going to start out with some rough lumber. I've got some here. I've got some over there. I'm going to cut it to rough length and I'm going to surface it four sides square. Just the initial milling to get it flat in a square. As I need the pieces, I'll remill them again to use them. This is a SketchUp model of the buffet I'm building, and this is pretty rough. This is just going to give me some general dimensions and things I need to look for when I'm building it. Anyways, there's six legs to it. There's one in each corner, and there's two in front, and I'm going to work on those next. Well, this is the eight-quarter material I milled up the other day, and this is actually cut from the same board. I just cut it down to make it uh, a little bit easier to handle. First thing I need to do is I need to get rid of these edges here. There's some sapwood here. There's this right here. That's all got to come off, but I'm still going to have more than enough to get the six legs out of this. After I got rid of all the sapwood and that one uh, kind of gnarly edge, this is what I'm left with. Now the only places you're going to see more than one face of the leg is on the two front corners. So I need riffs on grain, which means the grain is going diagonal like this, so I'll have straight grain going on both sides. I'll get those two pieces out of this and then I'll cut two more out of here and then I'll probably get another three legs out of the rest of it. I'm going to have an extra leg which is a good thing in case I screw up. This stock is an inch and seven eighths thick right now and I'm going to cut these at inch and seven eighths square. These legs are not going to be square however. Well, these are the six legs all cut up now, and this is what I was talking about. I've got nice straight grain on the face of everything you're going to see up. And on the sides, it's the same. It's all nice straight grain here. So I'm going to take these over to the thickness planer. These are going to be an inch and a half wide this way by an inch and five eighths this way. So I need to mark these up and make sure I get the right faces, the right width. But uh, it's just going to take some time for the thickness planer, but I'll get them down to size pretty quick. I've got the four outside legs here, and I've marked a carpenter's triangle where they go. And they're marked one, four, five, and six. Before anybody asks me what happened to two and three, Two and three are the two legs that go in between here in the front of the cabinet. Anyways, so I've marked out all the joinery, all the mortises, and all the grooves for the panels that are going to go in here. I just need to go over to the mortising machine and start getting all the material out for the mortises. The mortising machine is set up with a 3 8 inch bit and chisel, and I'm going to start getting rid of that material for the mortises. But I do need to be really careful where I'm doing this because there's differences between how far away some of these mortises are from the fence. And this piece here is also an inch and a five eighths tall by an inch and a half wide. And then there's mortises on the other side that are going to have a different measurement. So I just need to be really careful where I'm drilling these mortises. The Morrison machine does a really good job of cleaning out most of that material, but there's still a couple little pieces in there that still need a little bit of chisel work, so I'm going to work on that. And this will only take me about maybe five minutes per leg. Now these half inch grooves in all four legs are going to house the side panels. There's another groove that has to run between this mortise here and this mortise down here to receive the back panel. Now that's a quarter inch. I'm going to do the same operation, but this time with a quarter inch bit. The setup is a little bit different, but it's basically the same thing. I just need to go ahead and cut these. Well, 
Well, with the mortises and the grooves pretty much complete in the legs, I can start working on the actual rails. Now, these three boards here has got a lot of defects in it, but I've mapped it out and I can get all the side rails and the back rails and the rear styles for the rear panel out of these three pieces. I've already milled them three quarter inch thick, and now I'm just gonna start milling the uh, rough parts out of them. They need to be three inches wide and different lengths. So I'm gonna get to that now. Well, here's the pieces, and I should mention that I did cut these a little wide. Uh, they're actually about three and a quarter inches. There's a lot of defects in these boards, as, which happens with common rough lumber when you buy it that way, but that's why I get it so cheap. But if you look at some of these, when I started cutting them, I knew that they were going to go wonky on me. So there's a big gap here. There's a big gap here. I think you can see what I mean. So I said I left them wide. I'm going to take them over to the joiner, get one side completely flat, or one uh, edge completely flat, and then recut them. Well, the side rails and these two back rails have been cut to final length. These two pieces here are styles that are going to go in here and hold panels for the back. Until I have it dry fit together, I'm going to leave these long. I'm getting ready to start making the tenons that fit into the leg mortises. Now I've got a leg here to test with. I've also got a three quarter inch dado stack set up in my table saw. It's about three sixteenths of an inch high. It's a little bit lower. I want these tenons to be three eighths of an inch thick and this is three quarter inch material. This is one of the cutoffs from the rails that I had before and I'm going to use my miter gauge in conjunction with my table saw fence to do this. So I'm going to make a couple test cuts to see if it fits slowly raise the blade up and creep up on it until it fits nice and snug in here. Well, it took me a couple passes, but this is the fit I'm looking for. It's nice and snug. I can pick it up. It won't fall out. And I'd rather have it too snug than too loose. I can always trim them down a little bit later. But I'm going to use this setup and I'm going to go ahead and make the tenons that are on the side rails and the back rails. I have a pair of the side rails here. This is the lower, this is the upper. Now I've made some marks on here just so I don't get confused because there's a, several different things that have to happen here. Now on the bottom rail here towards the front I need to cut off a full inch right here and three eighths inch down, leaving this part as the tenon. On the back of it, it's three eighths and three eighths all the way to the shoulder. Now this is the top piece and they're haunched mortises which require haunched tenons. So I'm going to take three eighths of an inch off the bottom here and then three eighths of an inch going up to this point here on each side that'll fit into the mortises correctly. I'm just marking these out because it's going to get really confusing if I don't. I just want to make sure I do it correctly. Well, these two pieces here are patterns that I'm going to be using to route the front profile edge of the dividers that go in the front, the middle, and the top. So normally what I do with this is I take some you know, MDF, a long trammel, a router, and route these edges. And I'll leave a link up in the corner for you to take a look to see how I do that usually. This time I did it on the CNC. The CNC really shined in this. Uh, I was able to cut these out from actually doing the software part to actually having these pieces done in about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, which is a huge time saver. Plus they're extremely consistent this way. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna make a larger pattern to cut the front pieces. I've taken those two patterns and I've laid them out on my full size pattern. I've taken a straight edge to make sure they're flat up against the back. I've also got one of the rear rails because I want to make sure that the distance between the shoulders on here are exactly correct. Now that I've got that done, I can secure these down and then work on the full size pattern.
So I've got this piece over here at the router table and I cut about a uh, sixteenth or thirty-second inch away from the, the patterns themselves. I'm going to flush trim that to these. What this piece of wood is here, there's a little gap in between there and that's just to make sure that the bit doesn't dip into there. So this is a really simple operation. I just need to keep this pressed up against there. It's going to ride up against the pattern and get this one big pattern done for me. With the pattern done, I've added a couple of these toggle style clamps on blocks here. And when I put the board in here to pattern around the front, I'll be able to hold them down with these. Over here at the router table, I've got the same pattern bit I had before, but this time I've raised it up so the lower bearing will be guided against my MDF form. I want to make a special note about cutting with the pattern bit. Now when I'm going like this, I'm actually going uphill and I'm scooping the grain this way. There's a really good chance of tear out here. If you're using a straight blade bit, that could be a problem. What you want to do is go halfway go downhill on this side, flip the piece over, and then go downhill on the other side. This is a special bit, and some people call it a compression bit, but the flutes on it go both up and down. So it allows me to do this. If you're gonna do a lot of pattern routing, I highly recommend a bit like this. Now there's going to be two extra legs in the front that are going to be let in with half laps and I've marked that out right here, the starting and stopping points. And I've got a cutoff from one of the legs right here that I can use over at the table saw to get that done. After a couple quick passes at the table saw, this is the fit I'm looking for. It's pretty tight, but I can finesse that a little bit later if I have to. These grooves in the side rails are for the panels that will slip into here. I've dry fit the back of the carcass and what I need to do is get a measurement between the lower and upper rail so I can cut those styles and it's 32 and 5 16 Now since I know my rails are, have a 3 8 inch groove on both sides, I add 3 quarters of an inch to that so that's 33 and a 16th. got my miter gauge set up and I've got the blade where I've got three-eighths of an inch to this outside edge of the dado blade exposed. And I'm just going to trim off a little bit here 
flip it over, do it again, and then test the cut. I'm going to slowly raise the blade and creep up on until I get the perfect fit. So after I've marked the center line on these styles, take these rails. I know the rails are 63 inches long, so I'm going to go, it's real easy to divide this by three. That's 21 and 42. And then I'll just put these two rails together, even up the ends and strike a line across both of them at once. Well here's the dry fit of the back of the case and I was off on my 21, 21, 21 before. I forgot about the thickness of the rail so I'm 20 and a half inches from each end and then 22 in the center. But it came out really nice. The joints are nice and tight and uh, everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and do a dry fit of the entire piece. Well the dry fit of the frame is complete. There's still some work that needs to be done on the inside for the internal dividers and the drawer supports and things like that, but I'll do that later. Next up are the veneered panels for the outside of the piece.